This is Sports Rage. I am Renzi. The quickest 180 minutes in sports talk and television continues, and it really has been uh, tonight for real. Um, like, seriously, I can't, I can't believe I'm looking. I'm like, damn, really? We're already in a level three here, huh? Uh, we got Tony George coming up next. So more college basketball talk. Try to get as many different uh, perspectives and opinions. Great show tonight. Uh, for if you're, you're, you're a college basketball fan, we had a coach, James Young, big man on campus. And now uh, Tony George will wrap up a little football talk with Rick Saratella, NHL action. As I mentioned, the Edmonton Oilers have defeated the Montreal Canadiens. Canadians um, play these sort of rivalry games. It's the one thing, one thing I'll let you guys know, specifically Americans, is that you sort of throw out the records when Canadian teams play against each other. You figure it wouldn't matter, but it does. It does matter. Like, their rivalries. And another thing is, too, like the Montreal Canadiens have a ton of fans everywhere. And they only go to Edmonton once a year. They only go to Vancouver once a year. They only go to Calgary once a year. So a lot of people, you know what I mean, they get fired up for it. And the teams know this as well, right? Like the Canadians will be more fired up for a game against the Edmonton Oilers than they will against the Anaheim Ducks. Right, just because they look in the, in the stands and they they know they're like, yeah, you know what? People paid a lot of money to see us tonight. Like they they're fired up to, and we suck, so we should try to try here. <laughs> so right, and they do, right? They do. Like I said, the Canadians usually play well against these good uh, good Canadian teams. So I was worried about this one, but I did play a George Kurtz special. God bless George Kurtz. I played the George Kurtz special tonight. The Vancouver Canucks and the Edmonton Oilers parlay together. I did one with the Kings too. Shout out to everybody joining us on Sirius XM Channel 159. The Vancouver Canucks are up 2 0 on the Buffalo Sabres uh, right now. And they just showed like a um, a shot of the city of Vancouver. And I swear to God, anybody that watches Canuck games, when you see like the, the exterior shots of the arena, normally you can't see anything. Like it's like I always wonder, I'm like, guys. Like, if I was, like, producing a game, I would say, listen, either we got to start shooting these little exterior shots during the day or let's just drop them because they have these cameras set up outside the arena everywhere, and all it is is a bunch of rain. <laughs> There's fog and rain on the camera all the time. You could barely see the arena. So it shocked me tonight. And crystal clear. Perfect weather in Vancouver tonight. It's actually been, like, super sunny and hot and everything for a couple of days, but... Uh, that couldn't last. It's sort of like uh, a winning streak for me right now. The cook can't last, so it's, it's going to rain for like 10 or 12 days or 14 days or something. Bring it on, baby. We'll just be watching basketball. So we got basketball going on right now. And, you know, I'm damned if I do. I'm damned if I don't. It's one of those deals like I bet big on a game, I lose. I bet small on a game, I win. I was losing, you know, the, the games tonight, so I jump in on the the Irvine Utah game. I bet the over one fifty three and a half in game. I'm thinking, man, maybe I should put more on this, and then I didn't. And the next thing I know, it's at one sixty eight and a half right now. And the way I'm going, I'll bet the one sixty eight and a half, and it'll end at one sixty eight. So they they put up eighty six points in the first. Like I said, these Irvine games have been pretty wild. Irvine aren't known for, like, a high-scoring team either, but they've been playing a lot of high-scoring games this year. And Utah as well. We 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 hit a Utah over in the Pac-12 tournament. And like I said, like, this is you're, – you're asking these players to stay after school, so to speak, right? Some of these teams will vote whether they want to play in the tournament. But just imagine, like, you've already – the season's over. So you're playing in the NIT, yeah, you want to win, but at the same point in time, the coaches aren't, they loosen up a lot. Like, I, it's a very a good comparison is to, like, bowl games, right? When you get to a bowl game, most coaches will say, you know what, let's just go for it on the fourth down here. What do we got to lose? It's the last game of the year, whatever. We're seven and six, who cares? We're six and six, right? You know what I'm saying? So these teams are sort of the same way. It's like, whatever. And I'm not saying, you know, the, the coaches will say before, let's have some fun, guys. And, you know, in a regular season or in a conference tournament or something, if kids are taking bad shots, they're going to say, yo, bro, like, stop. Like, don't do that. Right? But in a game like this, it's like, yeah, whatever, man. Let the point guard have fun tonight. If he wants to shoot, let him shoot. Right? You know, we're, let's just have some fun here. So it does lead to overs. 
So 168 and a half right now. Utah and UC Irvine. So Tony George is going to be the next one up. And we got baseball going on right now as we speak, actually. The San Francisco Giants are beating the Royals 8-5. And um, in some uh, Cactus League action, uh, I actually like San Francisco this year. I think they're going to go over their win total. So Major League Baseball, it's set to begin in a matter of hours. The Los Angeles Dodgers obviously are favorites uh, tonight. And this is pretty crazy. The, the Dodgers would be a bigger favorite if the game wasn't being played when it's being played. A lot of people don't even know. I tweeted out about this today saying, you know, I bet you a lot of people don't even know baseball starts tonight, and they didn't, right? And it's funny because the Dodgers were minus 180 like this morning. They're minus 220 right now. It's a beautiful day for baseball. Let's play two. Or at least one. Let's roll. This is Sports Rage. I am Renzi. Level three has begun. Shout out to all of our AM radio affiliates who are joining us uh, right now for the final hour of the program. You missed the first 120 minutes where we've been doing a uh, old school 40 minutes of hell. Nolan Richardson, full court press. We've talked uh, college basketball all night, and we're going to continue to talk college basketball. Tony George is going to step up and in T. George Sports. Straight from the Strip of Las Vegas, Nevada. We'll break it down with Tony George. Tony uh, was on with us, of course, um, live from um, the MGM Grand in Las Vegas, Super Bowl week. So it's the first time we've caught up with Tony uh, since uh, that wild uh, first game of the NCAA tournament uh, tonight. Wagner survives and beats Howard. Howard had three clean looks at the end of the game to tie the game from three. They missed all three. Good news, bad news. Good news is Wagner wins their first ever NCAA tournament game. Bad news is they get to North Carolina Tar Heels on Thursday afternoon. North Carolina opened up as 24-point favorites. We've been going over the odds of exact final matchups, and I, for one, do believe that the UConn Huskies are going to win the national championship and they're going to beat the Houston Cougars in a national championship game. That is 16-1 to plus 1,600. So feel free to fire, um, you know, in our chat, fire off the matchup that you want us to try to find the odds uh, for or on Twitter at Sports Rage. Countdown, the first pitch is on. It's getting real. Let's do this thing. The Los Angeles Dodgers were like minus 180 favorites over the last 48 hours or so. And even earlier this evening, the Dodgers are now minus 220. And get ready for this. The Dodgers are going to be massive favorites in every game that they play. And just imagine when they play a game that people actually know uh, that they're playing. But we know the people joining us on the 50,000-watt juggernaut, the Mightier 1090 ESPN Radio in San Diego and SoCal know uh, that there's a game uh, tonight. You Darvish has never pitched against Otani before. This is Sports Rage. Bring it. NCAA tournament. Ah, oh, that's the movie that we know when it's winner go home. They love to go home. Tennessee's now in my phony club. They should all get together and drink green tea. Tournament's gonna have a oh! chance. Oh! Oh! That is a team I'm betting on right now. We are feeling this. You are feeling this at home. The excitement and the atmosphere only on Sports Grid. Unlike the last one, I don't think these managers are going to sign up for a 1-1 draw. I think the Spurs know they need to win this one. They need the full three points to try to get into Champions League position. But generally speaking, 
I find Klopp and Liverpool's approach to be much more effective, which is you disrupt those patterns of play, you get in the middle of those triangles, and you put them on the back foot. Pro League Soccer, powered by Marca, only on Sports Grid. Hunter Dickinson and Kevin McCuller Jr. are not going to be fully healthy for the NCAA tournament. I think KU might be in danger of a very early round of 64 exit in the big dance. They're playing really, really good defense. And to me, that's what you need uh, this time of year. You gotta be playing great defensively to give yourself a chance. Now like Kentucky you gave up 97 last night. Only on Sports Grid. Anyone that's been to a sporting event. The atmosphere before a game. I think Game Time Decisions has that same exact atmosphere. This is our arena. This is what we do. There is going to be an energy to Game Time Decisions that you will feel night in and night out. The excitement you get when you when you lock your bets and when you're figuring out what you want to do. We can zone in on the biggest games each night. I want this to be the place that people come to before the games start so they feel as ready as possible to lock in their cards. We are going to hit every single one of those markets that you need to know about. We're gonna go through every single thing and I've got a great team behind me that's gonna help me get the job done. There is not gonna be a better place, I promise you, than Game Time Decisions to get that new information, react to it, and be able to then bet accordingly. We will have everything at our disposal and we will use that to our advantage. I'm Kevin Walsh. Tune into Game Time Decisions from 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern on SportsCrit. Let's roll. This is Sports Rage. I am Gable Morantz. You know, pitch the players, the hustlers, the people, the bust up, and everybody else in between, including the March Maniacs, as March Madness has begun. And if the first game was anything of what's to come, which it's going to be, it's, there's going to be a lot of stress, a lot of last-second missed shots, made shots, close games, as uh, Wagner and Howard actually turned out to be a lot better game than the Virginia Cavalier game was. That you know, no. what a pathetic, disgraceful p- display. And good job by the committee putting Virginia in, leaving some of these other teams out. A team that scored 14 points in a half or 16 mm-hmm. points, whatever the hell it was. Let's bring in uh, Tony George from Tony George Sports right now. Tony, good to see you. How you doing tonight? Doing good. And I, I echo your sentiments on Virginia. I tweeted out, I go, what a nice job by the committee picking a team that managed to put up 14 points in one half in an NCAA tournament game. Let me ask you a question. How is a team like Virginia that is a perennial top 15 team, four years removed from national title, can't recruit a shooter? Yeah, how do you not have a shoot? It's amazing Those to me. guys were throwing bricks. They were they should they must be majoring in masonry because all they're but doing. But Tony, is they were missing bricks. layups and like four dude. footers and six footers. Like, dude, they were they were five for. We were talking about it live. They were five for thirty one at one point. I remember we were talking, and they'd only taken nine three point shots, and they were two for seven. So in other words, they were like three for twenty three from from two point range. That's impossible yeah, and, to do. And by the way, look ahead there. While Colorado State looked like a world beater tonight, bear in mind, let me tell you something. Virginia had open looks from 10 feet and in all night long. You do that against Texas, you're going to get lit up for 80. Virginia, you don't have to worry about it. Yeah, that was uh, – and my bad. Listen, I can call, uh, I can call Virginia out all I want, but I was expecting them to play better and sort of – Prove people wrong, so to speak. But you know what's amazing, Tony? They haven't won an NCAA tournament game since they cut down the nuts in 2019. I know. It's the, and that's an amazing stat. And the, the other thing that just dawned upon me earlier with UConn winning a national title last year and the odds on favorite this year, they hadn't beat a ranked team until two weeks till the end of the season this year since 2014 on the road. Obviously, neutral sites don't bother them, but at the end of the day, you know, there's just some amazing stats out there. Virginia was totally overrated. The fact that Indiana State and St. John's and some of these other guys sitting on the sideline, St. John's turning down an NIT, even Oklahoma, 
anybody would have given Colorado State a game. Virginia wasn't one of them. Right now, we've got Utah and UC Irvine in NIT action, the last game of the night. Uh, Utah are up 50 to 42. They're laying 11 and a half in game right now. The in game total is 160 and a half. It hit 168 and a half at the half. We stayed away from that. We got one over 153 and a half in game. So 160 and a half right now. No early foul trouble uh, here so far. So let's let's look forward uh, here uh, to the NCAA uh, tournament, Tony. Let's start off. I'll start off instead of with the games, and I'll ask you about sort of your bracket, so to speak, and not sort of your personal bracket, but the regional. Right. How do you see these things playing out? Start off with North Carolina. That's interesting that North Carolina are the one seed, but Arizona are actually the favorites to win the region. Do you agree with that? Um, I, I don't agree with Arizona winning the region. Arizona is is too inconsistent. They seem to play the level. They're, they're, Arizona reminds me a lot of Creighton. Creighton is a really good basketball team. Creighton is a team that could get to the Final Four. The problem is with Creighton and Arizona, they seem to play the level of their competition at times. And they don't bring their A game all the time, where North Carolina will bring their A game. Uh, Obviously, North Carolina State had more in the tank than they did going into the final. But uh, I'm not sold on Arizona, and I'm actually not sold on the Pac-12 at all, honestly. You know, I thought Washington State might be a player this year. And then what soured me on them was the final game of the season, the final matchup against their in-state rival Washington, senior night, laying seven points. They get smoked at home by an average Washington team. That conference was talked a lot. They were a hell of a lot better in football than they were in basketball this year, put it that way. Who do you think? So I don't want to put words in your mouth, but what do you think about Drake and Washington State? The game's a near pick them. Drake are actually one one and a half point favorites. Um, I, I'd lean Drake in that game. I think DeVries is one of the – DeVries, for them, seems like he's been there for 15 years. His dad's a head coach. This kid's a baller. I do a lot of work in the Mo Valley, uh, one of my specialty conferences. Uh, they're fundamentally sound. They throw the ball around. They got three guys in rotation off the bench that can hurt you in a lot of ways. Uh, they don't turn the ball over. Uh, they don't make stupid mistakes. They just do the basics correctly. And uh, they're extremely well coached. And they beat a damn good Indiana State team to get here. Uh, Indiana State is no joke. Uh, They're one of my odds-on favorites in the NIT uh, to get it done. But I like Drake Drake in that game. I think they're going to advance. And uh, I think Washington State's overrated. That's why they're they're an underdog. Yeah, and you know what? The odds makers don't lie. Throw out seeds, as we see with a couple of these games, with yeah. the 10 versus the 7s, and the lower seeds actually being favored. So to win the regional odds, um, that we're, we're talking about uh, North, North Carolina Tar Heels not being favored despite being the one seed, which is a classic example of this. And I agree with Tony. It's a good a good uh, analogy about them playing up or down to the level of their competition, but they're not intense enough. I think that's just what you just stated a little bit. Arizona don't have the intensity needed of 40 minutes. We're going to lock down. We're not going to turn the ball over. We're not going to make mistakes. Yeah, we know you can jump. We know you're going to hit a bunch of threes and you're athletic and stuff. But this is mental warfare as well in this tournament. And Arizona, I don't think, have the mental toughness uh, to do it. I don't understand why they'd be favorites. North Carolina are plus 320. Alabama, very flawed, good offensive team. Baylor are a good team. To me, um, you know, Baylor, very dangerous team, but they could also lose to anybody almost, Baylor, as well. They are very good, but I have a hard – I wanted to buy into Baylor, but the last couple of the weeks of the season, I just saw too many – too much inconsistency for them. But besides North Carolina, Tony, who's a team, if you have to take a a flyer on somebody else in this region, who would it be? I'd have to say Mississippi State. Mississippi that, State, huh? So, so you got to beat that, a Michigan State then. Yeah, that's that's a shocker to a lot of people. But I like what they did against Tennessee. Uh, they're well coached. They're a good basketball team. They're my sleeper in this division. Uh, right, in, Mississippi in this State. Yeah. All right, so that's, that's, that's the, uh, that's the West. Yeah. 
uh, against North Carolina or yeah, against they North would Carolina. get North Carolina in the second game. So if they can yeah, get past that, saying. they can go on a yeah. little bit of a run potentially. They have to beat uh, Michigan State, and then they would play North Carolina, who plays um, who plays Wagner. North Carolina twenty four point favorites. So the East, yeah. UConn are heavy favorites to win the East. They're plus one ten to win the mm-hmm. East. Iowa State are plus four fifty. Auburn are plus four seventy five. The alumni are seven to one. BYU are fourteen to one. The Aztecs, SDSU, are twenty to one. Drake are twenty eight to one. Florida Atlantic are twenty eight to one. Washington yeah. State are twenty eight to one. Northwestern. This is almost like the fundamental region, Tony. Right when you look at a lot of these schools, yeah. right? You yeah. know what I mean? Like San Diego State, Drake, Northwestern, uh, hell, Duquesne. Want to slow it down, and then you got South Dakota State. Um, we'll get Tony's thoughts on this bracket on the other side. So I do think UConn are, are cutting down the nets and winning the national championship. But Iowa State guys are a very dangerous basketball team that are battle tested, playing the best conference in the country, and can beat the best teams in the country. They're not flashy, they're not sexy. Nobody ever talks about the Iowa State Cyclones, but they are a dangerous team. More with Tony George on the other side. Bring it. When it comes to betting on sports, injuries matter, and Sports Injury Central has you covered all year long with expert injury analysis and injury-based picks for the NFL, NBA, and MLB. Our former pro sports doctors have unmatched experience to analyze every injury so you know the impact of the player, team, and their upcoming matchup. Whether it's articles, podcasts, player insights, or our patented injury scores, Sports Injury Central will help you keep up with your fantasy team and make more informed wagers. So make sure you follow Sports Injury Central and gain an edge at at sixscore.com. Your gut says Miami is going to win and you should take the over. Your gut also said your NFT selfies would only go up in value. They didn't. But your head is on sports grid and knows the QB is in concussion protocol. The backup has a 45 QBR against the zone coverage. The New York D has the most sacks in the league. So yeah, trust your head. It's smarter to be on sports grid. betting in game there's a big difference right like the the computer changes the number so often like i tried to get this in right now but in reality as i saw plus 165 in the arena they're hitting the shot and i'm getting this like a couple of seconds late and even the sports book like technology can only like travel so fast sports rage late night only on sports grid sports grid your 24-7 sports wagering network. Pro League Soccer, powered by Marca. I would be willing to bet the under two and a half goals. Fantasy Sports Today. Especially in head-to-head formats in fantasy, I think I'm going to go with Juan Soto. Game time decisions. People don't like it. I don't really care. I cannot believe anybody is betting the Clippers at this number. Betting above the rim. All we've heard you say on the network is you're either winning your rebuilding in game live all access nobody has been more profitable as a dog than shaka smarty winning back-to-back road games i I don't care if they're playing topeka high i i wouldn't give them any chance whatsoever in game live prime time back to back just utterly stinker quarters in game live overtime honestly as, as you sit here and listen watch right now you may want to consider uh, placing that bet. It's smarter to be on sport. (laughs) 
This is Sports Rage. I am Renzi. 2-1 for the Vancouver Canucks over the Buffalo Sabres uh, right now. There's seven and a half minutes left in this game. A uh, quick NHL update right now. The Los Angeles Kings in action against the Chicago Blackhawks. They beat the Hawks the other night 5-0. They're beating them 5-2 right now. The Wild are up 4-0 on the Ducks. The Lightning are up 4-3 on the Vegas Golden Knights, who are trying to recapture last year's magic late in the season. There's under four minutes remaining in that game uh, right now. We're kicking it with Tony George. So, uh, Tony, there's so many games and so much stuff I want to throw at you. we got one more segment, a couple more minutes with you. But uh, we are on in the San Diego uh, area. So, shout out to everybody uh, joining us on the 50,000-watt juggernaut, the Mightier 1090. What do you think about the San Diego State Aztecs? And I know you actually do think they have a tough matchup because you're high on this UAB Blazer team. Yeah, I'm high on the ever team out of that conference. You know, UAB did a hell of a job in that conference. And uh, I think it's a lot of points to lay. I think San Diego State advances in that game, but I think it's going to be one of the – you talked about the heart attacks, the heavy sweats, right down to the wire. That's going to be one of those games. UAB, they hang around. They're well coached. they got a good ball club. They got good guard play. San Diego State, not the team they were last year. Obviously, I got monster respect for them, but I like UAB in that game to cover the number. I agree with the points. I think it is going to be a super close game, and SDSU will find a way to survive and advance. Yeah. Um, what are any other underdogs uh, that you that you're looking at getting the points that you think you well, know what talk- maybe they could win the game outright as well? But who are some live dogs? Well, live dogs, I'll give you two of them, two big underdogs. Number one, I like Akron, plus the 12 and a half against Creighton. Creighton, as I mentioned, you know, they have a way of playing down to the level of their competition. We talked about this about Arizona. Creighton even more so. They lost, you know, yeah, they they got a, what, 82 to 66 win over UConn when UConn played them in Omaha, but Again, UConn can't beat a ranked team on the road. They did until the second to last week of the season this year, first time in 10 years. But Akron's a good ball club. That's too many points. They can, they're can, they they're very well-rounded basketball team. And if Creighton doesn't bring their A game in there, they're going to be in for a tussle. But I'll tell you one team I'm, I'm going to say could be a huge upset. Mark my words, College of Charleston over Alabama. Outright. All right, you I, cannot. I play. can't. Uh, I can't disagree with you, especially in a game. It's like a football game where two teams are just going to trade points. And whenever you get a football game like that, I always like taking the underdog. These teams are just going to trade baskets all night long. That's it. I'm a, I sat around here with four handicappers. I won't name them. You know, well, Griff Murphy being one of them, who did your show out here in Vegas. He works for Doc Sports with me. Hey, we sat in a room. We said, let's go through the bracket. Let's go through this thing and let's find out the upset. Who's going to be the Fairley Dickinson, the whoever? Who's going to be that first round, the Furman? Who's going to be that first round? And all four of us came up with that very same team. I'm definitely taking the nine and a half. You know, it, or yeah, definitely taking the nine and a half in that. When is, when's the, and j- just, to, just to emphasize your point about their trading baskets, When's the first time you ever saw a first half total in the NCAA or the f- first round total at 173 and a half? I can't remember. And I've been doing this 30 some years. And we were talking about this total earlier. You can't bet the under <laughs> as high oh, as it is. No, no, like, you, know, you, you can't, you, you can't, you can't bet the under. So college of Charleston are getting nine and a half. The total is 173 and a half. So Kansas had been a beat-up team, Tony, down the stretch, and we know McCullough's yeah. going to be out uh, for them. I've been on the Samford bandwagon. I was talking about them. I said before the draw, I'm excited to see who they get. And yeah, all teams considering, they got a pretty good draw if you're Samford, actually. Like, I'd, ra- I'd rather yeah. get – if I'm Samford, I'd rather get Kansas than Tennessee or something like that. You're getting a team that doesn't have their best player – um, they're kind of offensively challenged. They don't shoot the three very well. We know Samford like to run. They can score. And I think they yeah. will be able to score. I love the over the game because Kansas are going to score on them as well. But it opened up yeah. at eight and a half, nine. It went down to six and a half, seven. It's all over the place. But I am buying into Samford. What's your take on that? 
I, I agree with you 100%. That, that, that came in second of the teams we talked about, the first round upsets. I think I think Kansas and Alabama are very weak four seeds. I think Auburn is probably the strongest four seed of any four seed in the history of the tournament. But and Duke is yeah, they're about where they should be. But with Kansas, they're and again we talked about this in Virginia early in the first segment. If you're Kansas, how do you not have shooters in house? You're Kansas for crying out loud. They don't have good guard play. Sanford, that team, they're playing does. And if Sanford gets by this game somehow, they're not going to make it out of the second round, I can tell you that. There's, this is the worst team Bill Self's had in 15 years. I can't disagree with anything uh, you're saying. What about yeah. Vermont and Duke? Can you talk yourself into the Catamounts plus 11 and a half against Duke? Sure, I can. And one thing I'll do about that, I like the first half line in that one on on uh, Vermont. They're a good first half team. They come out firing. You know, we had UMass Lowell winning that conference this year, hands down. And what Vermont do? Turn around and put it in their favor. I mean, they just do what they do. They're a good basketball team, uh, fundamentally sound. They got shooters. They'll run the floor. They play some sound defense. Duke hit and miss at best. Um, I don't think the ACC, they look bad at times in the ACC this year, and I don't think the ACC yeah. was all that strong. How'd Virginia do tonight from the ACC? Yeah, how'd that work out? <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, here's a big number, but speaking of first half, when you said first half, I wanted to bring this up. We've seen the Houston Cougars sometimes this year. These guys start games like they're winning 22-4, to four, they're winning 18-3, to three. They have come out hot quite a lot. They're coming off a big-time loss. They're one of the teams to beat. You know, they think they can win the national championship. I'm expecting them to dial it up against uh, against yeah. Longwood here. They're laying 15 and a half in the first half. I think they're really going to hammer them in the first half. Like, they'll take the I'd pedal be... off the metal later, but, I, you know, I think they murder them in the first half here, Tony. There's not... Uh, uh there's not a matrix that tells you that they're an offensive juggernaut Houston and they go through scoring droughts. A lot of the time their defense carries them, but I agree with you in this particular case coming off the butt whipping behind the woodshed, just rear kicking that Iowa state gave me. And bear in mind, you mentioned earlier, Iowa state is no joke. They are a good, well-coached basketball team. With, with playmakers all over the floor. That being said, I think Houston, if I would be surprised if they weren't up by 20 at halftime. We agree. Tony George with us. Tony, we got about four minutes left, four or five minutes uh, here. So what else do you like? And who do you have winning the championship? Any futures to make the final four, et cetera? What do you got for us here? Well, I've got uh... – I've got, uh, I haven't completely done my entire bracket. Um, I'm going to take Purdue out of the mix because Purdue's Purdue. Uh, they do it every year. Purdue's Purdue. They're going to lose somewhere. Um, I think Tennessee is a strong team. I got them going to the final four. Um, I've got, I've just got my final fours down. I got Tennessee and I got Houston on one side and I have Auburn, um, I have Auburn on one side there, and I took in my final bracket, I took Mississippi State. So I went contrarian, bold. totally yeah. bold, contrarian, and um, I don't know who's going to win it all, but um, we do have the same the side there is, on that on that yeah. other side of the bracket. I've got Tennessee playing Houston in the final four, and Houston beating Tennessee to go to the championship game. Well. And bear in mind, it's Rick Barnes, head coach, in March, in big games. This guy screws up more big games than anyone I've ever ran into. He could even win the Big 12 tournament with Kevin Durant when he was coaching Texas. I mean, come they on. Could, they could go up against Purdue, too, at some point in time. Matt Painter versus Rick Barnes. Somebody's got to advance. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, I just <laughs> think I, I think Tennessee is just so connect to a hell of a ball player. Maybe the best ball player in college basketball, NBA guy all the way. Tennessee's just got so much talent. They win through sheer attrition. 
despite bonehead coaching calls or rotation shifts that Barnes puts in out of nowhere. They just got so much sheer talent. They can go up against anybody and get it done. Tony George, Doc Sports uh, with us. So, uh, Tony, who do you think wins the championship? I keep coming back to UConn. I have a hard time. But, you know, And I know that they don't have the easiest path, but nobody really does. I just really do think they're locked in right now. They believe that they're the best team. I don't think they care who they play along the way. I think Hurley knows exactly what but- buttons to push. They know they have different levels. They can dial it up a notch in-game. They can win a low-scoring game. They can win a high-scoring game. I think we are going to have our first repeat champion since the Florida Gators. I I would lean that way simply because I'll tell you this. If they get to the final four out of that bracket, out of that bracket, they're battle-tested. They can beat anybody because they got – UConn got screwed being the overall number one seed, having three other conference champions in their bracket. They're going to end up playing Auburn. You get through Auburn, that's a hell of a win. Uh, then you might end up playing Iowa State or Illinois. You, I mean, I mean, if they get through that, they'll take care of whoever comes out of the bracket below them, and uh, they'll give somebody a hell of a ball. I'd agree with you. This NCAA tournament. Ah, oh, that's the movie that we know. When it's winner go home, they love to go home. Tennessee's now in my phony club. They should all get together and drink green tea. Tournament's gonna have a chance. Oh! Oh! That is a team I'm betting on right now. We are feeling this. You are feeling this at home. The excitement and the atmosphere only on Sports Grid. Unlike the last one, I don't think these managers are going to sign up for a 1-1 draw. I think the Spurs know they need to win this one. They need the full three points to try to get into Champions League position. But generally speaking, I find Klopp and Liverpool's approach to be much more effective, which is you disrupt those patterns of play, you get in the middle of those triangles, and you put them on the back foot. Pro League Soccer, powered by Marca, only on SportsGrid. Hunter Dickinson and Kevin McCullough Jr. are not going to be fully healthy for the NCAA tournament. I think KU might be in danger of a very early round of 64 exit in the big dance. They're playing really, really good defense. And to me, that's what you need uh, this time of year. You got to be playing great defensively to give yourself a chance. Now, like Kentucky, you gave up 97 last night. Only on Sports Grid. Anyone that's been to a sporting event, the atmosphere before a game, I think Game Time Decisions has that same exact atmosphere. This is our arena. This is what we do. There is going to be an energy to Game Time Decisions that you will feel night in and night out. The excitement you get when you when you lock your bets and when you're figuring out what you want to do, we can zone in on the biggest games each night. I want this to be the place that people come to before the game start so they feel as ready as possible to lock in their cards. We are going to hit every single one of those markets that you need to know about. We're gonna go through every single thing and I've got a great team behind me that's gonna help me get the job done. There is not gonna be a better place, I promise you, than Game Time Decisions to get that new information, react to it, and be able to then bet accordingly. We will have everything at our disposal and we will use that to our advantage. I'm Kevin Walsh. Tune into Game Time Decisions from 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern on SportsGrid.
The Twisted Tuesday continues. This is Sports Rage. I am Gabriel Moran. See, it's March Madness, and it's not just madness on the college hardwood. It's madness in the National Football League. There's no rest for the wicked. The draft is rapidly approaching uh, right now as the dust begins to settle after the quarterback carousel and shuffle that just went down in the National Football League. Let's bring in allaccessfootball.coms and more. Rick Saratella in the house. Rick, it's always a pleasure. How are you doing tonight? Gabe, happy to be here, man. So, uh, Rick, there's a lot of stuff uh, going on in the football world uh, right now, specifically around the quarterback uh, position. There's a lot of talk about teams uh, wanting to move up in the draft right now, specifically the Minnesota Vikings. But for all the talk about all these players, and specifically quarterbacks, that come into the National Football League, it should be noted, uh, and this was tweeted out earlier in the day from a uh, Twitter account called NFL Research, uh, in which um, in 20 from the 2021 draft and the 2022 draft, there were 19 quarterbacks taken. Only two of the 19 are expected to be starters this year. Trevor Lawrence, who was the first pick in 2021, and Brock Purdy, who was the last pick in 2022, are the only two quarterbacks left standing as far as being starting quarterbacks. And you have to wonder... There's people talking about a potential of six quarterbacks going in the first round uh, this year. How many of them will actually be starters two years from now? Well, I think that also there should be noted, uh, I think 90% of the starting quarterbacks last year were first-round picks. So if you look at the trend, it's the first-round quarterbacks who usually get the opportunity. The Dak Prescotts, Brock Purdy's, Aiden O'Connell's of the world, they're the abbrevi- uh, abbreviation to the rule. They come around every other year, once a year. But I think what you're seeing here is, again, we talk about younger front offices, shorter uh, patients in the ownership groups, new ownership groups, but more importantly, younger head coaches, younger assistants, and simplified prospects coming into the league. We talk about Uh, In the scouting community, at least, players not being developed, playing in simplified offenses. And it's not because the quarterbacks come into the league and they fail because they're not good or because they're busts. It's all about systems and scheme and coaching and adapting the offense to the talent. And somebody asked me, like, hey, can the Giants draft a quarterback? How long will it take for that guy to be a starter? No, it's like... How does Brian Dayball, who's very good at building an offense around that quarterback skill set, how much can he, uh, how quickly can he transition that skill set to the NFL level? And if you can't do that, then you're out of here. You get maybe a two-year lifespan. One, if you're Sam Howell, if you're a a day two or a day three guy. And I think you'll see that. Like with Aiden O'Connell, they brought in a veteran guy with Gardner Minshew. And if it doesn't work out, both of those guys will be out of here. And that's the modern-day NFL world we're living in. If you saw 16 NFL teams signed a veteran quarterback, uh, either to be a starter or a backup, because it truly is a QB carousel, we talk about it frequently on this show, the haves and the have-nots. There's about 10 to 12 teams with a starting quarterback. There's more than half of the team looking to upgrade their starting quarterback. And that's why so many of these quarterbacks are going to go in the first round come April. They really do a lot of these players a disservice by drafting them as high as some of them are drafted. And I've said this before. It's a lot like where you're born um, in in the real world. Some people are born into money. Some people are not, right? Some people are born in, in a rich country. Some people are not. And it's like a random draw. A good example to me is Justin Fields. If Justin Fields, hypothetically, let's say Justin Fields ended up in the Jalen Hurts situation with the Philadelphia Eagles behind Carson Wentz as opposed to being put on the field with the Chicago Bears, right? And the lack of talent that they had compared to the situation that Jalen Hurts uh, is in. Situation really is everything. And let's be real as well. Something you said that is true. You know this being around general managers, being a scout and stuff. There used to be a five-year plan, right? That was the thing. If you got a job, a business, 
right? That was a you know that was a common phrase you would hear a lot. The five year, what's the five year plan, right? If we if you're rebuilding something, what's the five year plan? Now Harbaugh got the five year deal, um, Peyton got a five year deal, so they're sort of old school with this. But that's sort of an exception because they're kind of icons and legends. So they're not dumb enough to only take a two or three year deal like everybody else has to. But I guess my point is there's no five years anymore, as you stated. It's yeah, it's a two year plan. If you're not on and if it doesn't look good after one, you could be replaced. We're seeing first round quarterbacks are replaced after a year or two, but how many of these players would have been better off well suited sitting behind somebody for a couple of years, like so many legends did. Right, Aaron Rodgers sat behind Brett Favre. Brett Favre was a backup uh, in, in in Atlanta. Right, you see Jordan Love look good after waiting a couple of years, but nobody has his patience or time anymore in the modern world. Rick, let's just call it out for what it is. No, and I think it's the evolution of free agency as well. You used to have quarterbacks kind of just stashed second and third stringers that came up in the system for years and years. And now, you know, I think it's really a, 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 an effect or an after effect of Jamarcus Russell and Sam Bradford because the new CBA, they said, hey, we can't have this. We can't have organizations – anchored down for five, ten years if they draft the wrong quarterback. They shouldn't be penalized. They're already terrible. Well, no, they should they be because they screwed up. They should be penalized. Well, but, you know. They, you know what I mean? They but, should be, in my opinion. Well, you know what? That's 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 a good argument. I think that the uh, NFL evaluation process, if you look at first-round quarterbacks, more miss. is not very hit. good. <laughs> it's not very good at all. It's not very good at all. And so I think I think what the NFL did with that CBA, though, they said, hey, let's not make it so that you can't move on. And now they've always they've almost gone to the extreme other end now where you can just, you know, hey, uh, Josh Rosen, we don't like you (laughs) one year. You're out of here. Justin Fields and like Ryan Poles, he gets a do over. But look at the supporting cast. Maybe he learned a lesson. Look at the supporting cast from just a year ago, what Justin Fields had to what Caleb That's what I'm thinking. That's my whole point. If you're Justin Fields, you got to be thinking, you know what? I didn't have Keenan Allen. I had DJ Moore for one year. I didn't have DeAndre Swift, right? My life would have been a lot easier. If, like, Keenan Allen gets open, like, you know, point blank, he gets open. Like, he's a guy you can get rid of the football too quickly. He's one of the top uh, wide receivers in the National Football League. And catching balls within two seconds. They got stats for everything now. Him and CD Lamb are like the best at it. Like just sort of out of the out of the out of the root. Boom. The quick first move. Bam. Right. I think people kind of underestimate that. So you're right. Caleb Williams is walking into a much better situation than Justin Fields ever dealt with. Let's be real. Suddenly it's Shangri-La in Chicago. I'm even buying into the hype. Yeah, I tell you, this is a better looking situation than even what CJ Stroud had a year ago. But, you know, uh, the point that you opened up the segment with and you said, hey, the, the, the constant turning of the quarterbacks, it makes you wonder why, like, why the heck would Atlanta spend this money on a mediocre quarterback and, and Kirk Cousins? Well, it's because, you know what, maybe they don't see it with some of these younger guys, right? And they don't want to take that chance, so they're gonna they're gonna sign up for mediocrity because they know. And they don't want to wait. And also, I think they 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 took the shot right with the Desmond. It wasn't the right shot, right? But they took their shots. I think they see that division, and they are pretty damn good. They do have a lot of talent. Now, let me get to something for people that they can use. It's like David Lee Ross, you know, give me something I can use uh, here. The Athletic is reporting that Malik Neighbors could be the first wide receiver taken. That it's not a consensus anymore. That is Marvin Harrison Jr. As I stated, take everything that you read right now, right? I mean, it's all opinion. It's all opinion. There's not one team in the NFL, guys, right, that is calling anybody to tell them, yeah, you know what, this is what we're going to do in a draft. This is what we're thinking in a draft. No. Everybody projects this stuff on people, and some of it comes true. Some of it does not, but do you believe that Malik Neighbors could get drafted ahead of Marvin Harrison Jr.? No, 
And I look at the Chargers, who are sitting at number five, Jim Harbaugh, who was the starting quarterback when Marvin Harrison Sr. came into the league at the Indianapolis Colts. And I think the Chargers just got rid of two starting nice, quarterbacks. Nice, nice old school reference there. <laughs> hey, and I had to go back and reference that as soon as Harbaugh cut these two quarterbacks. I said, hey, well, wait a second. Well, what's the tie-in here? Was he with Harrison? And in fact... He was the starter in Indianapolis when Marvin Harrison entered the league, and now they got to replace those guys, and I don't think that there's any chance in hell that Jim Harbaugh is going with Malik Neighbors over Marvin Harrison. A player that he played against, which will be, or coached against, I should say, played against, um, coached against with Marvin Harrison, obviously. Not this year. He didn't coach the game. He was suspended, but that's another story. But that'll be that'll be crazy if... If his first pick as the head coach of the Chargers is an Ohio State Buckeye, that, that'll be something, I'll tell you what. But a lot of people are probably thinking and tuning in right now, well, wouldn't Arizona take Marvin Harrison potentially then? They're the ones with the fourth pick, but a lot of people are believing that the Arizona Cardinals will be the ones to trade trade down maybe with the Minnesota Vikings. The Broncos don't really have the capital to trade up here. So I think the Broncos just might have to deal with whatever quarterback is there still available uh, for them with the with the, uh, with the the 12th pick. But I don't think the Vikings want to take that chance. I think the Vikings are locked in. I don't know who it is they like. I guess you could argue the fact that Josh McCown has the connection to Drake May is something to keep your eye on there. But a lot of people, are you one of them to believe that the Minnesota Vikings – won't take the chance and just sit there at 11. They're going to move up in the draft to get their quarterback of the future. Do you agree with that? I do agree with that. And and there's also some smoke that Justin Jefferson could be traded to uh, maybe uh, in, a, in a package deal. I don't know. Uh, I think anything's on the table. I think, you know, Justin Herbert. I'm not smoking that smoke. I don't know. I, don't know. <laughs> I, think, I think a lot of things can happen here. I think quarterback could go one, two, three, and four, right? So, you know, I forget the question, Gabe. What was it? <laughs> Jefferson, listen, Jefferson wants money, but they're not. I don't. Um, they're well, a quarterback I don't away. Think, I don't. Think, I don't think Jefferson is. I, I don't think Jefferson's happy with that situation going on right there, right? And and you see when people when when players are disgruntled, we've seen it. Devontae Adams, we've seen it. Uh, DeAndre Hopkins, like. It's starting. It's it's there. I can understand that in a sense that, without a doubt, that if I was Justin Jefferson, I'd be a little bit concerned that I see that Sam Darnold's the quarterback. Right? I'd be right. thinking, and, all right. And, and he but, already turned down like $30 million a year. But let's see, let's see what they come back with after the draft. Let's see, you know what I mean, the new look uh, Minnesota Vikings. And if there's any coach as well that, listen, you know, O'Connell's a great coach with quarterbacks. We've seen this. That's that's just a fact. But Stephon Diggs, he's somebody to keep her eye on uh, right now. Although the Buffalo Bills are stating that it's business as usual, um, that they're not about to trade him. Rick Saratel, All Access Football, dot com. This is Sports Rage. The Twisted Tuesday continues. Bring it. NCAA tournament. Ah, that's the movie that we know when it's winner go home. They love to go home. Tennessee's now in my phony club. They should all get together and drink green tea. Tournament's gonna have a chance. That is a team I'm betting on right now. We are feeling this. You are feeling this at home. The excitement and the atmosphere only on Sports Grid. 
unlike the last one, I don't think these managers are going to sign up for a 1-1 draw. I think the Spurs know they need to win this one. They need the full three points to try to get into Champions League position. But generally speaking, I find Klopp and Liverpool's approach to be much more effective, which is you disrupt those patterns of play, you get in the middle of those triangles, and you put them on the back foot. Pro League Soccer, powered by Marca, only on Sports Grid. Hunter Dickinson and Kevin McCuller Jr. are not going to be fully healthy for the NCAA tournament. I think KU might be in danger of a very early round of 64 exit in the big dance. They're playing really, really good defense. And to me, that's what you need uh, this time of year. You got to be playing great defensively to give yourself a chance. Now, like Kentucky, you gave up 97 last night. Only on Sports Grid. Anyone that's been to a sporting event, the atmosphere before a game, I think Game Time Decisions has that same exact atmosphere. This is our arena. This is what we do. There is going to be an energy to game time decisions that you will feel night in and night out. The excitement you get when you when you lock your bets and when you're figuring out what you want to do, we can zone in on the biggest games each night. I want this to be the place that people come to before the games start so they feel as ready as possible to lock in their cards. We are going to hit every single one of those markets that you need to know about. We're gonna go through every single thing and I've got a great team behind me that's gonna help me get the job done. There is not gonna be a better place, I promise you, than Game Time Decisions to get that new information, react to it, and be able to then bet accordingly. We will have everything at our disposal and we will use that to our advantage. I'm Kevin Walsh. Tune into Game Time Decisions from 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern on Sports Grid. Well, countdown to first pitch is on. Thanks to Rick Saratella for kicking with us. Los Angeles and San Diego. Let the games begin. So as we've warned you for the last couple of days, if you're playing any player props, the the updated win totals and all that type of stuff, that goes on throughout the year. But specifically, I really like Freddie Freeman to have the most doubles in Major League Baseball this year. Three to the last four years, Freddie has had the most doubles for the last eight. So he's sort of in his prime of dominating this right now. And... He should win convincingly once again. Pretty good number at plus 400. Speaking of Freddie Freeman, he's the Dodger that hits you Darvish the most. Nine for 31, two home runs. Same game parlay. Give me the Los Angeles Dodgers to win the game. With Freddie Freeman over one and a half total bases, it pays plus 145. Now listen. It wouldn't surprise me if they, they split the two games set, right? Darvish is a badass, but he does give up home runs. So, so we should note Shoei Otani plus 240 to hit a home run tonight in his Dodger debut slash in the morning for those of you on the East Coast. So we're going to play Otani to hit a home run at plus 240. We're going to play the Dodgers to win with Freddie Freeman over one and a half total bases in a same game parlay. We'll play a few same game parlays. Um, with with Los Angeles, but I do think it's the first game of the year, so you're, this, you're not going to get like Otani and these guys in this price uh, again. Like Mookie Betts over one and a half total bases is minus 110. Betts has not hit um, Darvish well, but he can still easily get two bases in this game. But Otani is minus 120 for over one and a half total bases. I'm definitely playing that. If he doesn't hit a home run, he gets a double. And Freddie Freeman, we love Freddie Freeman over one and a half total bases uh, tonight. I'm going to post my picks uh, for the baseball game on uh, Twitter. Darvish is five and a half strikeouts, and Glasnow is six and a half. I'd like to take Glasnow over, but I know they're going to take him out after like five innings of this game. But he has been dominant in spring training. Other than that, you're on your own. Later.
The Bostonian is Matt Peralt. This is our f- city.